Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Chat in the chat. Shout out to Chris Orchard, Finley Bennett, Andrew Fan, Avery McDowell. Thanks, thanks y'all for being here, and obviously everybody else that's here. Welcome to another edition of hashtag FFT Live, presented by Fitter and Faster Swim Camps. Welcome again to all you athletes, parents, and coaches out there. My name's Tyler Clary, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Fitter and Faster, and I'm a 2012 Olympic gold medalist from the London Olympic Games of the 200-meter backstroke. Um, I want you to let us know in chat where you're from and which swim team you're repping, and I also want to know how old you are. All right? Hi, everybody. Um, if at any time the chat begins to get a bit overwhelming, there's a, a red button. If you're on desktop, it's over here with uh, three white dots, and that'll actually minimize your chat box. I'm not exactly sure how to do it on, um, on the phone yet. There's also a button um, that says reconnect. If you have any issues with the audio or video, go ahead and hit that reconnect button, and it'll solve most of those issues. That being said, um, I'm going to try to keep the chat on. Um, if people aren't spamming, I'll keep the chat on. If I see a lot of spamming going on, I'll go ahead and turn the chat off until the very end of the session. I want to let you guys know that we are going to be doing um, a Q&A point or a Q&A session at the very end of this show. And also, I want to encourage you guys to stay until the very end of the webinar because we're actually going to be giving away two gift cards to people. So stay until the end and you'll hear some instructions on how to get some free stuff. Everybody likes free stuff, right? So let's get started. Um, welcome to this episode titled Breaking Down Freestyle. We've got two awesome presenters with us today who've uh, graciously volunteered their time and they've put together a cool little presentation that I think you guys will find a lot of value in. Um, we've got with us today Tyler Messerschmidt, who's from Phoenix, Arizona. He swam at UC Berkeley, also known as Cal. He's a five-time NCAA champion. He was uh, twice on the NCAA team with Cal and he's a two-time American record holder. He now coaches at Scottsdale Aquatic Club. We've also got with us Shane Ryan, who swims for Ireland and lives in Ireland. He's an Olympian. He's a world and European medalist. He went to Penn State University, and his main strokes are backstroke and freestyle. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, guys, how are you? It's pretty awesome to have you guys here. So uh, first off, it's a really beautiful day here in Charlotte. What's it like where you guys are at? And tell us where you're at. So, oh, I guess uh, right now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, around there. It's beautiful. It's probably 70-something uh, degrees outside. Now's the time to perfect pick swim, but <laughs> a tough time. It is what right it now. is. We're all dealing with the same thing, right? Right. Um, I'm currently living in Dublin, Ireland, so I'm in my, my house right now. It's a surprisingly beautiful out for Ireland because it's usually rainy, but it's um, about like 60, 60 degrees right now and sunny, so it's beautiful, but... As you know, we can't get in the water, so we're on the whole country is on complete lockdown. We can't even leave our house by like or anything like that, only to get food and you have to stay within two kilometers of your house to go out for exercise. So pretty strict oh, <laughs> restrictions. Wow. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's awesome. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, no, no again, we're stoked to have you here. And uh, I can tell by the chat everybody's super happy to have you guys here. Uh, we've actually got uh Fraser Scott who's here from Scotland. He wants to let you know that uh think you would find that kind of cool. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about kind of your history as freestylers before we get into the technique portion and, and kind of breaking down the stroke. So um, Tyler, talk to us a little bit about, you know, some of your experience as a freestyler specifically. Yeah, I mean, it all, it all kind of started really just with um, just the knack of kind of racing. Um, and I think everybody just just, just, just really loved that. I know freestyle is a stroke that uh, everybody swims a lot, but I think, you know, as much as I kind of got older and started learning more about strokes and uh, coincidentally, you know, swimming other strokes, I found out how technical kind of freestyle really was and how, you know, the best ones in the world, you know, are really just doing those simple things better than everyone else. And um, yeah, I just really started enjoying it. Cool. Shane, what about you? Tell, tell us a little bit about kind of like, were you always a really good freestyler, like throughout your whole career or, or did it like kind of develop later? Like what's your background as a freestyler? Um, for me, it's like I kind of had like backstroke free and fly like growing up, like they were my main ones. Breaststroke was just an odd stroke for me. I mean, I can do it, but not great. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
so it's like you know it was always came a little bit more naturally for me because like you know like tyler like i've raced tyler a couple times as well it's just like we're big guys so we just like freestyle like usually the bigger guys are a bit you know a bit better freestyler so it's like it did come naturally but like it progressed every certain years for me because it's like for me i'm wasn't just freestyle i was a freestyle freestyler i was a back jerker and like fly if it my like my team ever needed me but it definitely came along um as i got older and stronger and more um like knowing my body that was like the main thing for me like knowing how my body feels what way if i rotate my hip too much there's certain pulls and like i've started to learn now that there's different strokes to like for different races you know for like a 50 free um yards i mean i'll go like straight up straight arm or like i tried something new at um short course europeans for the 50 short course like i came up i usually go to right to 15 but i popped up earlier and try to get into my stroke a little bit better and just trying new things out but i mean it's i was always there but it just you know you have to practice it a lot of times and just by racing yeah for sure and that's kind of uh that's a super interesting point because even though you know we're talking about freestyle as as a singular stroke right but there's yeah. a lot of different ways to swim freestyle that's kind of what you were just getting at so somebody who swims just a 50 freestyler is going to swim very very differently from a 400 freestyler who is also going to swim very very differently from somebody who does the 10k open water right so it's all very different so keep in mind y'all in, in chat as we go through the stroke technique portion that we're about to get into keep in mind that this is how shane views freestyle and this is how tyler messerschmidt views freestyle and i probably have a different view of freestyle than than both of them do as well so keep in mind that you know some of the the things that we're going to be talking about are kind of individualized to ourselves but there's a million ways to skin the cat so we're going to try to talk in generality about the stroke and glean what you can from it. So that being said, let's get right into it. And I'm gonna pull up our slide presentation and we will go from there. So once again, obviously this is called breaking down freestyle. We're gonna to try to give you guys our best opinions on the stroke. And from here on, I'm gonna let Tyler and Shane take it. So let's get right into talking about body line. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll start. Uh, body line, you know, uh, just like us, Shane said, you know, we're really big, um, of big guys and I think your body line in all strokes, but I think more so in a freestyle is the most important thing, you know. Um, you know, you want to stay up on the surface, you know, and uh, stay nice and flat and you really want to focus on really getting your lower back dry. You know, I always I always like to tell my kids, you know, you really want to it's how you start swimming downhill, um, is by getting that lower back up on the surface. And therefore I think then you create this this optimal a position I, I don't know shane is that something that you yeah no it's um you know like you're running down like everyone yeah you run downhill it's a lot faster a lot easier but then running uphill is just completely like awful it's awful so it's like for me it's like you want to swim like as flat as you can um and it just makes things a lot easier you know like you try to like you know one of my old coaches sergio lopez we would throw like a little five pound ten pound weight with a belt on our back so our hips will completely sink and then that surface area that you're getting on your hips, your stomach, you know, and it's a lot harder to bring it up. So you have to engage your core, your lower back, you know, you have to swim completely different when you're completely, when your hips are completely dropped, uh, dropped. But when you bring your hips up, to, uh, you try to achieve that straight body line. It's so much easier to swim. You just feel so much faster. And like the things just like the, how you kick or just, it's pushing you down and moving you forward. The, the stroke and like the body line and like the connective like through like your hand down to your toe um, is just like it's just so optimal if you swim it the right way with a good body line. It's the same thing as streamline, you know, like everyone like, you know, even up to high school and college level, like everyone still needs to work on streamline, you know, unless you get it down right. It's all those little things, you know, it's the same thing with body line, body lines, the same thing with every stroke. You know, when you take your breaststroke stroke, you need to get into that nice body line, the same with the fly, same with the free and the backstroke. It's all about that body line. Right. And, you know, uh, that's such a great point. And, you know, I've done a lot of clinics. I know that you guys have coached a lot and done a lot of these clinics too. Um, you know, and I talk about the body a lot, kind of like a torpedo. And I think the body line is a little bit what you guys are getting at. So um, last week I used uh, I used a hairspray bottle, which my fiance is uh, unaware that I'm borrowing. But let's let's think about our body, kind of like this hairspray bottle for a second. So ideally, you want to be able to move your body, your torpedo through the water with as little resistance as possible. 
right? So what you guys are getting at is like by swimming downhill a little bit, it's gonna kind of feel like your head. Let's imagine this part of the body bottle is our head. You want it to feel like your hips are a little bit higher than your head. And by doing that, if you look at the very front of the bottle, it's only the very top of your head that's essentially pushing back on the water that you're trying to pierce through. If you're somebody that swims with your head up and your hips low, that's effectively going to push your, your butt down and you're gonna be plowing through the water this way instead of piercing through the water this way. So from the front view, if all you wanna see is the very top of your bottle by having bad body line and allowing your hips to sink, now you can see the, very, the, the whole bottom side of the bottle and now you've got a lot more resistance in the water that you're trying to push through, right? So keeping in mind that this is kind of what we're talking about, this body line, the way I try to teach swimmers to work on their body line is um, this idea of having a piece of rope tied to the knot on the back of their head that goes all the way down to their tailbone. Because body line is very, very, um, it's very connected with your head position. So if you hit, have your head up like this, and you imagine that piece of rope tied to the back of your head and to your tailbone, that's gonna cause a lot of slack in the rope and that's gonna cause your hips to sink. But if you extend your neck and tuck your chin in, you're actually gonna pull that rope tight and that'll bring your hips up right to the surface. Does that make sense to you guys what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 and, oh, yeah. I, and I think it's like, this is something too that everybody kind of uh, feels the water differently. I, I think as like a coach, the hardest thing is like, you can't teach feel. And I think this is something that every individual swimmer just needs to just go play in the water. Just go lay on the surface of the water and learn how to press with your chest and have everything all connected. And this is something that you find out on your own. And don't be uh, discouraged. I mean, this is something that the best athletes in the world work every single day on these things. This is something that you will not stop working on. So and that's such a great point, too, because, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if you guys have experienced this yet, but a lot of times at the end of a clinic, you know, I'll have coaches or swimmers come up to me and say, well, you know, what are your secret drills? Like you guys didn't teach anything different from from what we've already kind of been told or heard. Right. And the point is, is we don't necessarily do anything different. We don't have any magic drills or anything like that. What we're doing is doing the basics better. And we've worked on all of these basics and all these fundamentals that you guys were already talking about for a very long time. And we've gotten really, really good at it. So, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have any other points or if you want to move on to the next slide. Yeah, let's move on. Yep. All right, let me move our video here. There we go. So let's talk about the pull. So for me, right, um, I always like I'll, the pull is like the most crucial part, you know, it's like and um, for the sweet spot for everyone, you know, it's the same thing with backstroke, same thing with butterfly, same thing with breaststroke. It's all in this area right up here. So if you put your arms up, this is this area right here where we skull. Like that's basically, you know, I call it my sweet spot. So like that's a photo of me, um, and I'm doing like the 50 free there or the 100 free. So like I'm entering in right here, right? So my other hands allow myself to kind of rotate now, so I can get that nice little elbow pull. But you kind of have to think that your hand, you can't just be swimming like this and then this. So my hands here, but I'm entering. I'm trying to get it in. So starting to think of it as a full. It's all as one instead of two separate separate parts. And then when you're starting your pull, when you press down, you want to press like sort of right here and then trying to go over like a big bouncy ball, like a big physio ball. So that means you get everything here connected, your lat, your hip, and then that also then that also gets everything completely connected. Um, that's basically kind of how like, you know, I try to mimic, like just try to be nice and long, full, and then try to pull in and try to get myself over that physio ball. And then try to continue that, you know, I'll start off real slow and then I start to add tempo or I'll go up in tempo to slow down to my race pace tempo. Um, but the one good like drill that I like to do. So like throughout this whole thing, we'll have like a little drill at the very bottom and at the end we'll go through the drills. But it's like when you're on like the side of the pool, like on the side of the pool, put both your hands up and then come up or just even try to put one hand up just to try to activate, you know, your little, like your bicep and everything here that's all being connected through. Yeah, no, I think those are, those are fantastic points. Um, you know, it's all pretty much the same. I mean, I, I just try to really look at it as, you know, when you anchor in your arm, right. I try to, you want to think about not moving your arm past your body, move your body past your arm. Yeah. And that's just, 
that's just something that I think, you know, I didn't learn that until I was older, um, but it's something you kind of have to, you know, have the mental uh, capacity and awareness of. And I think you, I think the earlier you can kind of think about a, a swimming more in like a holistic, just kind of a, I don't know, a spiritual kind of way, I think then you'll start to understand how to break, break things down. And, you know, I just really think, you know, you anchor in your arm and I'm not going to really try quickly. I just move my arm back because, you know, I'm a big guy. Shane's a big guy. If we do that, we're just going to spin and go nowhere. You know, anchor your arm and move your body past your arm, almost like the rungs of a ladder, right? You want to hold that part of the ladder, right? And get your body past it. Um, Yeah. No, that's um, all super great points. And I have a a couple of things that I want to elaborate on. So, uh, Shane, you talked about, obviously, you've got it written here about thinking about your hand and forearm as one. So, a lot of times when I'm working with athletes, they talk about just pulling with their hands, right? Because yeah. everybody, like, that's, we're, we're humans. We, we think about doing things with our hands. But if you, if you think about like, um, like a sea turtle, for example, you know, they have those, those flippers. You kind of want to think of your whole arm and not just, you know, not just your forearm. You can actually pull with the, with the inside of your, your bicep too. You want to think of this whole surface as your pulling surface. So just by holding up my hand on the on the screen, this is this is a certain amount of surface area. If we're only pulling with this amount of surface area, that's going to give us a limited amount of ability to pull on the water. But if I can add all of this surface area to it as well, that improves it. And if I can add the bottom of my arm as well, that makes me even more capable of pulling on the water. So think about trying to keep a strong wrist and uh, you know probably the the best person that I can think of that most people at this age would connect with is Katie Ledecky. I mean she has an absolutely unbelievably good high elbow catch. Every one of her pulls, I mean she's straight up and down right here and that allows her to use this whole surface to pull backwards because guys keep in mind the physics of swimming is really simple. If I'm trying to go this way, I want to push that way as much as I can, as often as possible. It's really simple. And if I have more surface area pointed directly in the opposite direction that I want to go, that means I'm going to be more efficient at applying my power to go forward. Makes sense. So talk to me a little bit about the path that your, your hand and your forearm takes through the water from the very top of the stroke to the back of the stroke? Does it, does it kind of swoop in and out like this in a big S pattern or is it more straight backwards? Um, for me, it, like, it, it, like, again, like I'm like, we're both like Tyler and I were both sprinters, you know, fifties, hundreds. I mean, I can do a hundred, but I don't want to do a 200 or a 200, you know, but um, it depends on the race, you know, cause it's like, I like to kind of do on my hundreds now. Um, I like to kind of do like that up down stroke. So I leave more with my left and then anchor just to get that, what you were talking about, just to get that body forward and then kind of come over with my left or my right a little bit more faster. Um, it depends, you know, like even with the 53, it's like, you're going to go a little bit more straighter and more direct straight down. But then for like the longer distances, you want to focus more on that catch and you might swoop in and kind of do that little S, but I mean, it's all, everyone's different. Everyone's going to be shaped a different way. Everyone's going to be swimming a different way. And we can't, as coaches, we can't really teach that. It's just something you need to figure out yourselves to find out what works best for you, what's efficient, what's easy, and what makes you faster. And, you know, if you nail all those things down, try to like, you know, I love closing my eyes and trying to feel the water, not to visually see like where I'm going. I know how many strokes I take. I know how many kicks I take for each lap, even if it's long course, short course. Um, just so I know what I'm doing and how I can do it. If I'm really fatigued, it's going to take me a little bit, a half a stroke more or, or, um, or a half, like, or another stroke, you know? So just based on feel fatigue levels, but, uh, so yeah. And, and, um, that's, that's an interesting, again, it's an interesting point. And one that we've already made a couple of times is that everybody's going to do it a little bit differently, right? But theoretically, the longer that you spend pulling backwards, the more efficient that you're going to be. So, when, for example, let's talk about backstroke for a second. When I was first learning how to swim backstroke, I was told to pull with a big S pattern. So my hand would kind of go you know, down, and then it would go up, and then it would go down. And if you think about it, if I'm pushing down and pulling up, what is that doing for me to actually make me go forward? Nothing. Right. 
And in fact, a lot of times when I see backstrokers who have like a bounce to their backstroke, it's because they're pulling downward on the water at the very beginning of the stroke and the resulting force is causing their body to go up. All we want to do is go forward, right? So in my freestyle, and obviously it's, I, I think in freestyle especially, it's almost impossible to pull directly backstroke. Like the anatomy of the human body doesn't allow that to be the case. So naturally there's gonna be a little bit of sweeping in and out, but the more time you can spend pulling straight back, in my opinion, will make a swimmer more efficient. Now, does that mean it's better for every swimmer? Not necessarily, but we're talking kind of in generality, right? But those are some of the things that I was trying to work on. So do you got, um, so uh, Tyler, do you have anything to add about pull or, or are we cool to move on? Yeah, so just a real quick. I mean, I think the easiest way to gauge if your poll is um, if your poll is uh, successful or if your poll is efficient is you know you always want to feel resistance on your hands. The minute you don't feel any resistance, is literally you're losing everything. And a lot of time that that happens towards the end of everybody's kind of pull in the back. And so the more that you can try to optimize your hands, you know, I, it's it's not just you know straight down all the time. You know, sometimes it can be bent. I mean, when you get out of the pool, right? Your arms are bent this way. Nobody really gets out a way out here. You kind of stay underneath your body, right? And if you can get that uh, strength all through there and always have that resistance, always based on all your entire arm, um, there I think where you're being uh, the most efficient. Sure, sure. Um, before we move on from poll, I want to talk about because you know this this picture is a really good a really good example. A lot of people ask me like, well, how should my fingers be when I'm actually pulling on the water? And I've seen some people swim with their fingers completely splayed out like this. And I've also seen a lot of people pull with their fingers squeezed tightly together. And for some people this works. But I think this, this picture is really interesting because um, if you think about the way water sort of flows through things, it doesn't like to flow through really narrow spaces. So again, we've talked about surface area a lot already. So we want to try to make as much surface area on our hand and forearm and upper arm as we can. So with your hand, I've actually found that it's best to have just a little bit of space between the fingers. So can you guys talk about that? Yeah, so this, this photo is from um, Short Course Worlds in 2018. And that was uh, when I swam and I made semifinals for the 100 back or 100 free. Um, so yeah, I've like, I've noticed that. And like, I remember, I forget who it was just a couple years ago. If you think about it, right. If you try to focus on doing this, like I see so many younger, like kids, you know, during summer league and stuff like that, they're all like ninja hands. They're all so tense, you know, and you're tensing and you're only focusing on your hands. So when you tense up here, it's like, you're kind of wasting energy, you know, you're kind of wasting energy because you're focusing so much on this and you're focusing on trying to keep this tight opening your hands like this is you're just going through water. You know, it's just, it's, you're just not doing anything and you're wasting more energy again. But if you stay somewhat relaxed, but also firm at the same time, you're going to be able to figure out and feel the water a little bit more. You know, if you enter in like more like this or this, if you're like firm, but relaxed, your hands going to automatically form to the water the way it's going to be because your, your hands going to be resisting the water anyway. So that's like, for me, I'm all about like the feel. And me entering in here with my hand just like somewhat firm but relaxed at the same time, I'm able to figure out where, how like quickly I can pull, or if that was a missed stroke or anything like that. Um, I know it sounds crazy, you know, it's, it's, it's like milliseconds, but you get to know your body. You know, being a professional athlete, you get to know your body so well. So any little tweak, you're gonna you're gonna realize it, you know, and how you're gonna be able to move yourself faster through the water. So yeah, that's just my and input on it. But milliseconds, especially in a in a 50 free, can be everything. I mean, that can oh, literally yeah. be the difference between a first place and sixth place. Exactly. And and you know, I want everybody that's that's watching right now to, to think bigger. So in terms of one pull, if you change your, your finger position from this to being a little bit more relaxed and like this, you might be able to lower your time or increase your speed in that one pull by just a fraction. But how many strokes do you take in a 50? How many strokes do you take in a 100? How many strokes do you take in a 200? So you add all those little bits of time. And if you change just this little bit of your stroke to make a small improvement in that one stroke, that's going to pay dividends for your 50. I mean, that could mean as much as a quarter of a second in a high level 50. That could mean as much as a second and a half to maybe even two seconds in a 200. You know, it's a very, very big deal. 
So yeah. um, it's just a, a great point that I think this this picture pointed out. Uh, Tyler, do you have anything for us before we move on? No, I just think it's it's just um, you know I always say you know you want to be mindful you know and kind of that uh, mindful yeah. training is is something that you know always will uh, trump just you know repetitive going on and doing something wrong. You know I'm the kind of person where. I'd rather do one thing right and be there 100 percent rather than do it a 20 times kind of 60 percent, you know, and this is something that, you know, when we get the opportunity uh, uh, to get back in the pool, I just stand there and just and just play and just see how the water feels different here or here and here. And that's just something that you're going to have to um, explore on your own. Yeah. Um, before we move on, I just had a thought about, you know, you, you just talked about being mindful. So you guys have heard the phrase, you know, uh, sport is 10% physical, 90% mental, right? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of funny because I've found that to be the case. Like I'm not, I would not call myself a physically gifted person. I'm six foot on a good day after hanging upside down on a backboard all night. And I used to have to swim against guys like you who are, you know, five, six, sometimes eight inches taller than me. You know, I used to have to swim against Matt Grievers, the jolly, you know, the jolly Arizona giant. Um, and it's like, how how do you beat someone like that? And a lot of times it just comes down to a your mentality, but b visualizing all the time. So everybody's out of the water right now, including you guys. Everybody's out of the water right now. But this is a huge opportunity for everybody that's watching to visualize how you want your stroke to be when we get back in the water. So the, 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 the beautiful thing about our sport is that we put so much work into it and you get out of the sport what you put into it. But how do you continue to improve while you're out of the water? And I think the answer to that is visualization. Visualization is an amazing, amazingly powerful thing. And I think people can really get a lot out of this time out of the water for two reasons to improve themselves. One since we're not all in the water, that means that if there's people out there that are watching right now who don't have a perfect stroke, and for the record, I don't think anybody in the world has a perfect stroke, I think what that says to us is that we're able to get ourselves out of a, a rut, so to speak, because when we go into the pool, we tend to do the same thing over and over and over and over again, and we create you know, muscle memory that makes it difficult sometimes for us to improve. And right now, I think if people can, and this is reason number two, I think if people will sit and visualize how they want their stroke to be and how they want it to feel, they're going to be amazed at how, how quickly they're going to be able to get back up to speed when we get back in the pool. One way to do this, for example, without any body um, movement required would be just to lay on your back, either on the ground or on your bed. And just just completely relax and visualize all the things that we're talking about. Or if you're somebody that likes to actually have some movement attached to it, lay on the side of your bed. So if, if the side of your bed you know, comes to here, you can pull your arm down the side of the bed and watch what's going on and imagine that feeling of pressure on your hand and your forearm. And that connectivity in your mind is really going to help once you actually get in the water and you can feel the resistance of the water on you on you again. So I really, really encourage you guys to not only pay close attention to the rest of what we're going to talk about, but go back and watch the replay that you guys are going to get emailed in a couple of hours to think about things and lay down and visualize this stuff. It's going to help so much. So sorry for the little uh, the little tangent there, but I think it was important. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So let's talk about the kick. Yeah, so I mean, for, I mean, starting off, you know, we'll start at the very, very beginning, you know, when everyone starts like, you know, swimming and you see all the little kids and you always hear the the thump, like the thump, bump, 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 because they're kicking off from their knees. So like when, how I kind of think it's all about, you know, being connected, like being one with your body, you know? So it's like, basically you're kicking from like your hip flexors. It's like, you're kind of kicking with a nice little straight leg, but the knee bend is very, very minimal, you know? And like this, um, this is like the diagram here that I had, you know, it's like, I don't know if we really bend our knees as much as this, but I mean, it's a good little sh figure on like, you know, we're pressing down, but more importantly on that end, on that very end kick, we have to focus on coming up as well. And, and I know it's so big for underwaters, you know, like I'm, I love my underwaters and like, I'll try to go to 15 off every single wall if I can, you know, at being efficient, 
But if everyone's so focused on coming up and then also even on freestyle, the back down, but we also sometimes forget about that, that up kick. So when we're kicking, we have to be, you know, engaging our lower abs, engaging our lower back, engaging our hip flexors, and making sure that, you know, it's we're not getting that thump. It's a nice, steady, steady motion through the thing, you know, not kicking through our knees. Um, and then, like, also, like, you know, sometimes, you know, it's on that rotation, the rotation as well. Sometimes you might be able to get kids kind of kicking to the side or, like, anything like that. You don't want that. You want to kick that like radius, like within like a little hula hoop, basically, you know, like in this little area, you're kicking basically right in that little area. You don't want to go really, really, really big because you're just going to start the thumping basically. And like a good little drill is just streamlined kick. You know, you want to try to keep everything kind of completely engaged and in that good body position, like we were talking earlier about and making sure that we're flat, you can really tell on how you basically are as a good kicker. I mean, you can hold your hands here and kick in a streamline, making sure your hips not are, aren't are like going back and your legs aren't going really wide. And then, you know, that you can just get a little bit harder here and then even up into streamline and then you can get a med ball over top of your head then, you know, and just depending on like the level of skills. But that's one way of, you know, my idea and my view on like, you know, kicking freestyle. Yeah, um, I think uh, just to add on that, um, I think it's kind of funny how, you know, the best, the best swimmers in the world are the best kickers, you know? Mm. And I think if, if, if everybody works on their kicking, I mean, your kick is the motor of, of your entire swim. I always like to say, you know, my, your arms fall into your kick and your kick yeah, dictates how fast yeah. your arms need to move. And so if you can really work on that and really learn how to, you know, maximize your kicking, I think that, that, that's where everybody can get better. Um, everybody needs more kicking. Everybody fucking do more kicking. Um, and I just think that that's, that's something that, you know, really helped me. You know, I have really long legs and, you know, uh, my kick really helped my swimming. Um, and again, I think just, just to kind of really uh, on one of these uh, points, uh, the hardest thing that I think I've had to learn was to uh, continue kicking while you breathe. You know, you really have to drive through that breath. I think a lot of people look at a breath or even a look at, you know, a going into a finish or a turn as like a rest time. And, you know, if you can uh, think about it, like if everyone in the world thinks about it as a rest time and you don't, that's where I think every yeah. like you can jump on people, you know? Yeah. I have a hard time with that. Yeah. Well, it, it is, it is that. difficult, but if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it. Right. Yeah. So, um, it, it, so I want to talk about breaststroke for just a second and relate it to freestyle. So, um, and it might seem a little bit out, uh, a little bit out of left field when you, uh, when you initially hear it, but bear with me. So breaststroke is a very, very kick driven stroke. And I actually think all strokes are mainly kick driven, but if you think about it, in breaststroke, your upper body, your pull is more or less positioning your body to take advantage of the kick. So in freestyle, I think that, you know, some of the best kickers out there, like I used to swim with this guy named Charlie Houchin, who, um, who was absolutely amazing with kicking. Like I used to watch him, uh, I've watched him kick a 103 hundred meter uh, freestyle kick with a board. Oh which is God, freaking nasty. crazy. That it's nasty. absolutely nasty. But the point was, is that that motor was so good that the rest of his body could kind of just set up the kick to continue doing what it was doing. And all he had to do was set his anchor with his arm and move his body past that anchor while continuing that motor going. Right. So I think that's a, a kind of a thing to think about is that a lot of people will ask me, like, how do I improve my freestyle? And I ask them, how much kicking do you do? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I might do like 100 every practice. Like, do more kicking. That's an easy, easy, easy way. Um, maybe not the uh, least painful way to improve your freestyle, but it's definitely one that will stick with you for a long time. And if you watch some of the best races in history, like, uh, for example, the 4 by 100 freestyle relay at the, uh, the 2008 Beijing Games where Jason Lizak came home on um, on the the French guys, his kick coming into those last 15 meters guarantee was the reason why he won that race. He absolutely outkicked uh, out Elaine Bernard coming home, and it's one of those things where if you train it, train it, train it, it's going to be very easy for you to execute that in the pool. So uh, 
you guys have anything else to say about kick before we move on? Yeah, can yeah, I add one more you, thing? Oh, I no, get time. No, get time. Um, no, I, I think I, one I little. Told, yeah, good. <laughs> You're good, buddy. Go, go, go. No, so I was going to say, which is worse, backstroke kick or freestyle kick? Backstroke kick. <laughs> backstroke kick. Yeah, Leave a comment back... on the little chat to see which one, back or free, which one's worse. Sorry, right, on, <laughs> It's all good. I'll enable chat for people to let us know if they think backstroke kick or freestyle kick is more painful. Yeah, and I think uh, just to add one little tip, um, you know, the biggest thing for me, even when you warm up for races or even more importantly warm down, you know, I used to do, I think my warm up was probably about 60% kick. And I don't think people nowadays really understand how to warm up their legs and they'll, and they'll get out of the water and say, hey, coach, uh, my legs were dead. Like, well, how much how much kicking did you do to warm up? Uh, none? All right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Looks like most people are agreeing that backstroke kick is is uh, is the worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's one of those it's one of those more painful ones. I'm not really sure why, but it just for me it always was. I don't know if that's the case for everybody. Um, Clearly, it's yeah, not the no, case like, for everybody. Like to back up on Thailand, that I actually changed my whole routine. Like I'm very based on feel, like through like you know certain training blocks. Because each training block, there's something different that your body's going to adjust. Because like you're just either getting better, you're more fatigued. I actually upped my kicking during my warmups. I'll try to get around like 600 meters to 400 meters of kicking minimum every, every like, you know, like I don't, swimming is kind of like, you know, yeah, it's good to get the feel. You have to warm up your muscles, but getting your legs warmed up is the most important thing I think out of your whole race. Cause like, like you said, it's your engine. You're not going to start your Ferrari, turn it on and just rip it. You're not going to just floor it away. You have to let that warm up for it to be optimized and also for it to better be like, you know, have better performance throughout the season, throughout your time. So that's the same thing as your legs, you know, you have to warm them up. And for me, like for short course, I'm really big on resistance. So I'll throw drag socks on and also a parachute at the same time to either kicking freestyle as hard as I can for like 12 and a halves or even ripping underwaters. And I'll take off the parachute, take off the socks, vice versa just to get that kind of going, try to fill that up in phase. But like, you know, get your feel with your arms and then get your legs going for like the warm ups. And I think that's a really good point that you brought up because I actually learned that like literally last season. Like I just started kicking a lot more and I performed better and more routinely and more consistently. So yeah, that's a good point on that. Cool. cool. All right, y'all, we're going to move on to the next slide. But before we do, I want to let you know that if we can hold over 500 viewers until the very end of the session, which is not very long from now, I'm going to up the amount on one of our gift cards to 50 bucks. So stick with us, maybe get a couple of your friends to log on and maybe they'll get some free stuff. All right. So if we get to keep over 500 viewers until the very end, it'll be a $50 gift card. And then there will be another gift card that we give away to somebody who's never been to one of our clinics before. All right. So stick to the end and I'll give you some specific instructions. So let's uh, move on to the next slide. So rotation, let's talk about rotation. Yeah, for me, um, like with the rotation, I always kind of think if you're standing straight up and um, and you just have basically imagine like a pole going right through your head, down through your spine, down to the floor, right? Your head does not really move unless it needs to breathe. So your shoulders are just moving like this. Now, it's the same thing for backstroke. Same thing for freestyle, you know, and like that should not. And now it's going to vary depending on people. I'm always a big believer in trying to find what works best for you. And, you know, because like we only can tell you what works best for us. So for like 50 free, basically, I'm not going to be rotating like this. I'm going to be a little bit sh shorter, a little bit more like the amplitude won't be that bad. But then, you know, it's just it's all about making sure that you're being as flat as you can as much as you can, you know, unless you breathe, but like you, when you breathe, it's about just making sure you turn your head and everything like that, you know, making sure that everything's in that nice little straight line. And, you know, with that rotation, it comes from being connected through your kick, through your lower abs, your body, everything it has to be connected. So when you start to rotate, it's all about your hips and your, and your, um, for me, it's like my shoulders and my hips are working together. It's not, shifting here and then shifting my hips and like it's not lagging really whatsoever everything's kind of moving and then with when you start to add the stroke in i always love to do like you know you hold it one stroke out here you're kicking for like three seconds and then you slowly bring your hand underneath the water so you have that resistance so you get that catch 
but you're also engaging your core and you're driving your other arm up to make sure you get the other nice little rotation. So that's basically how I like to kind of feel it. But I start very flat and then I work just to basically get a better feel for my catch and then also the rotation. So I start flat and then I build my rotation because then you can just find what works best for you depending on what day of the race is or anything like that. Hmm. Tyler, what do you, what do you, how do you coach rotation to your swimmers? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with core strength. Um, you know, a lot of this, a lot of every stroke uh, kind of comes through the core, but you know, this was uh, for me, I was a backstroker growing up and kind of initiating that kind of rotation was easy just to kind of transition onto the front side. Um, and so really, uh, just like saying, it's, it's just, it's really all through here and you're not moving but your hips aren't going sideways and your feet aren't going sideways. You're finding that strength in that a fulcrum of your core, you know, and learning how to twist and really use that as, as a strength pull and not necessarily just, just uh, uh, swimming with your arms. You know, I, I used to swim with my neck um, and I, I went through a lot of injuries because I used to, I used to swim through here and I didn't really learn how to initiate here in my lat and my core until later on. And that's just, you know, and that's just something of, you know, just of being mindful, learning how you're swimming. And sometimes, you know, I think uh, taking a step back and just going back to the basics and just kind of learning and just kind of playing in the water. You'll hear me say that a lot. Um, I think I can't stress enough and it's just so important. You know, I, I feel like that's how you, all three of us kind of got to where we were is just is just kind of developing that a, a feel and learning how our body, you know, moves through the water and learning how to move our body through the water. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And one of the one of the ways that I kind of um I like to view rotation in freestyle. It was to look at boxers. So if you've ever watched like mm -hmm. old old video of like Mike Tyson, who when that dude knocked someone out, he knocked them out. Like and and it was interesting watching the slow motion video of w how he would line up his body right as he was you know if he was to deliver a right hook, for example, you would see. You know, I'm going to stand up for a second. You would see his his hips line up with his shoulders and he would actually rotate his hips first and his shoulders would follow through. So in freestyle and more, I would say, um, hip driven or, or 200 and up freestyle, your hips actually rotate first and your shoulders follow through. And every one of Mike Tyson's great knockouts, you would watch him set, his hips would turn and his upper body would just follow through. And it's almost the exact same thing in freestyle. So keep that in mind when you're working on that rotation is that you can use your hips to drive that rotation. And then it becomes something where it's not just how strong are you pulling here, but it's also a rotation thing. If you can build that rotation, that momentum using the weight of the rest of your body, you're going to increase your power output on every one of your strokes. So really good point. Yeah. Um, let's, Sorry, what were you saying, Shane? No, it's just like don't try to swim with your arms either because I know like a lot of younger guys will just try to just go like this and they'll just like you know cross underneath here as well or they go out. But help, getting that rotation down will really help you with uh, making sure you're getting connected and everything like that. For sure. All right, so let's talk about the breath. Do you guys want to pull up that video now or do you want to talk through this slide and then we'll, we'll look at the video? Um, uh, Shane, you want to hit this? Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're gonna be able, we're gonna show you a video. It's um, it's gonna be of Nathan Adrian taking his breath. It's absolutely mind blowing. You know, he's one of the best in the world at what he does. And you know, the breath is it has to be sneaky, but it has to be like you know controlled. It has to be appropriate, but it has to be moving forward. You can't just stop your stroke and completely take your breath and then continue. It's not like you're on like a little holiday going like, oh, I got this nice little break and then start everything, you know, and I had a hard time with it as well, you know, learning how to just make sure I'm kicking through or breathing into a turn or anything like that, you know, and I always, everyone growing, like growing up, like my coach is like, you want to, when you take your breath, it's like having that rotation when you turn and everything like that, it's only going to be just a slight turn. Now it's not with your head up like this and it's not with your head down like this. It's just a nice turn where you're the water is right on the line here and your head shouldn't be like this and it shouldn't be like that either you know you want to have it straight here where the water lines right here so when you breathe they're going to have that little air pocket here and a lot of people will end up kind of tucking their their chin underneath their armpit as well 
to try to get that breath. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure because then now you're you're trying to you're bending that pipe that I was talking about. You know, now your whole spine's all off a little bit more. Then your hips going to sink a little bit more. So now there's more surface area, a lot more resistance through that breath, just based off that one breath you took. And that's milliseconds. We can't afford milliseconds through our breath. When, or you just don't breathe in a 50, but 100 is a bit different than that. <laughs> but, yeah, so it should be just taken real quick but efficient at the same time. You have to know when you're going to breathe in your races. If it's a 50 free, try not to breathe. But if you're going to breathe, it has to be good. It has to be quick. You have to know when you're breathing, even with fly, because if you're swimming like a 50 fly long course and you try to take a breath, you're going to completely like, oh, I'm not going to take a breath. But then halfway through, like, oh, I need a breath. I need to breathe. You breathe. It throws off your whole rhythm. It's going to same thing with freestyle because I've done it. I literally still do it now. So you have to make sure that you breathe real quick, but you also have to be comfortable to your one side. So I'm pretty much good breathing to my right side, but I've been breathing to my left more so I can kind of balance that out a little bit better, you know, and then I can be a little bit more controlled. So it feels more comfortable to breathe to the right. Um, but yeah, you know, and like one good thing is it's like, you know, it's just slowing everything down, making sure you get like, you know, fins or like a pull, pull buoy on or even paddles just to kind of make sure you get that speed up and just focusing like one stroke, no breath, one stroke pull. But when you breathe, you want to add that pull in while you're breathing. It's not breathe and then pull. It's everything in one motion moving forward. Mm -hmm. Tyler, do you have anything to say about the breath before we pull up the video? Yeah, I like it. Um, I think it's just, if I can show you guys, I think it's really, you know, everybody thinks of, you know, what Shane said. It's not necessarily just lifting your head uh, this way. Cause I feel like when people will breathe, I'll do it this way. And there's <laughs> something like this, uh, breathe, their head is actually lifting up. And so if you can think about uh, the forehead and this point, you want to almost drive that down in the ground and then you, you'll get that breath this way and not, and not this way. A lot of times we like, this is the breath here and you want to breathe here and staying in that line. Yeah. And one way to think about it would be to kind of imagine somebody's taken like a Sharpie and they've drawn a line right down the middle of your face. And as you start to breathe, you don't ever want the water level to go past that line on your face. And it's really kind of like trying to breathe with your chin higher than the rest of your head. And by doing that, you're going to keep more of your head actually in the water as opposed to trying to breathe like this, like we see a lot of people do. So you want to try to move your mouth to the side and breathe this way. <laughs> as weird as that made me look just now, but um, I think that kind of gets the point across. So let's pull up the video of Nathan Adrian swimming here. And there's going to be, uh, it's, it's kind of a looping video and you'll be able to see from uh, underwater how exactly he's executing this breath. So let's, let's just walk through this. So his, his head gets back to center so fast, and there's going to be some slow-mo right here. So he's not spending hardly any time with his head out of position, but he's getting a full breath, and he's actually he's breathing every other stroke, and I believe this was in a, in a 100 freestyle. Mm -hmm. But it's really amazing to watch this because of how fast he's able to get this breath. And another thing to talk about is the fact that um, our diaphragm, which is the muscle that actually um, – here, let me go back to the beginning of the video. Our yeah, diaphragm. normal speed, right, in the beginning? Yeah. That's normal so. speed. So the, the diaphragm, our diaphragm I want to, is, is right under our ribs here. And basically when we breathe, that diaphragm spreads down this way and it pulls air in our lungs. It's a very, very powerful muscle. And if you're breathing properly, it should be a very explosive inhale. Some people like to take what I call vacation breaths, where it's just like, <sighs> and then they'll put their head back in the water. You can watch Nathan right now, and he's, he's just very quickly <sniffs> taking a, a breath in very, very fast. So let's watch that one more time before we move on. So very, very quick breaths. <sniffs> you know, it's very, very fast. Obviously, he's taking that breath probably in less than two tenths of a second, which is incredibly quick. And he's using that really powerful breathing muscle to breathe in explosively so he can get his head back down into position so his hips don't drop at all. And you can see that very, very clearly. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. Even his so hands, I don't know if you noticed his hands, his hands were like this too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, he was he was not pulling with his fingers right next to each other. They weren't splayed out like this. There was just a little bit of space. And basically the water gets trapped in between your fingers right here and kind of creates a mitt. And that's really what you want. That's how you're going to maximize the amount of surface area on your hands. And so like for the guys that are out there and the viewers and everything like that, you know, Tyler telling them, tell them like, you know, that little drill about like trying to lead with your head or whatever. Like I didn't know that before. I never heard that like way of doing it. So like that I'm still learning. And I actually have, I have notes that I'm taking down through here, just learning from these guys as well. So it's like, even at our level, we're still learning and we're still willing to learn. And so that's why like we're some of the best in the world. And you know, and that's why we're here with you guys. So I just want to let you know that like, you know, I'm still learning as well. So it's, it's good. Never stop learning. The second that as an athlete, the second you stop learning is the second you stop improving. It's that simple. And everybody else out there has the same mindset. Everybody's constantly learning. And if you're the only person that isn't out there constantly trying to learn and improve, then everybody's just going to surpass you. It's that simple. So let's talk about uh, let's to, to finish up the kind of the technique portion before we do some Q&A and we talk about our giveaways. Um, let's talk through these drills here. Yeah, so it's just like just the you know for you guys you know I know it's hard you know not being in the water and everything so I just wanted to focus a little bit more on the drills and have its own little slide. So for me, you know, focusing on like that pull drill, trying to get that catch. Basically, you want your arms like say like the pool like the right here, say like the uh, the edge of the pool is right here. You just want to kind of focus up here, you know, depending on your range. If you do any of these drills, please make sure that you're not hurting yourself or hurting anyone else while you're around. Make sure these are all safe and comfortable for you guys. But that's one of the things, you know, doing one arm, just making sure you're activating here or two arms, even for butterfly, but the same thing. And then you can get a little bit more advanced, pull out, and then you can just start doing pull outs as well um, with the vertical kicking. I mean, that's, I mean, everyone knows the vertical kicking, but making sure you have that nice like pull through your head down to the floor, down to the feet, making sure you're kicking in through that nice little radius, not kicking with your knees or anything like that. And it's a fluid motion forward and back. And then the rotation, I'm a big believer in the snorkel. I use a snorkel every single day when I train. And that helps so much. You can visually see yourself kind of making sure you're not crossing in front or anything like that and making sure that you're, you know, just nice and steady kick, moving your head, just making sure that's staying still. You know, you can focus on that as well. And then like the one breath drill is just simple, you know, just one stroke, no breath, and then one stroke, um, just trying to focus on that. And you can wear paddles as well or fins um, just to making sure you can kind of engage and get yourself to pull yourself forward so you can kind of get that feeling of, you know, making sure that half and half. And then Tyler, what was that? What was the thing you wanted us to focus on about that forehead again? Yeah, you want to drive your forehead down into the ground and kind of make it this way. You don't want to breathe like this. Like you don't want to take your breath and then you're this way. You want to breathe and almost feel like you're taking yourself down. I, it's it's going to be weird. You're not necessarily really driving your head down. It's just as we're here and we breathe this way, see, I'm up. It's like I'm lifted up this way. But if I breathe this way, now my head is now flat. Um, gotcha. Just hard to think about. Literally wrote that down in my notebook. That's that's actually a really good way of doing it. Thinking so, about it. Cool. All right, guys. Well, um, let's uh, go ahead and open chat back up. And uh, even though we're at 499 viewers right now, we're still going to give away a $50, $50 gift card. $499 is close enough to $500 <laughs> in my book. So make sure uh, we're going to do Q&A. And then right at the very end before we sign off, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what you have to do in order to get signed up for this giveaway. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and enable chat right now. And I want you guys to ask us any questions that um, you might want Tyler or Shane or myself to, uh, to answer. So um, they're going to start streaming in now. And uh, they may be a little I bit tough it. to follow. <laughs> I um, saw the one with the, um, I saw the breath control one. Um, that's something that I could, if that's something that I could jump on. Yeah, man, go for it. Um, how do you, a tips on how to make, or how do you hold your breath longer? Um, that's something that you work on all the time. Um, I have a set of that I give my kids every day and they know it as, as the hypoxic set. Nothing's on an interval. Uh, 425, first one is a, um, a two breaths, then one breath, then zero breaths, then zero breaths. And then 350 is a two, one, none. And um, just that's something that, you know, much like a kicking, much like a, a, um, a pulling starts and turns, a, a practicing hypoxic work is should be an element of everything. It'll help how long you can go underwater. It'll help how long your engine can keep going. But that's something that there's no, you know, 
we wish there was a magic pill to all of a sudden make everybody the fastest in the world, but there really isn't. Um, you know, this is just something you have to practice every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I saw a question that I want, want to answer. There was somebody who said, who asked, um, in your opinion, is it talent or hard work that, that is more important? And obviously, I think in a, in a perfect world, everybody would have talent and everybody would work hard. But there's this one um, one specific statement that I think is really interesting that somebody uh, that John Urbanchek used to always tell me. He said, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And oh. I know of a lot of different swimmers out there that I used to compete against regularly who I would consider far more talented than I was. But I knew whether it was that I was training with them or um, out of hearing about them that if they were working hard, I knew I was going to beat that person. So if you don't feel like you're the most talented person out there, don't worry so much about it. Just work your butt off, and I promise it'll pay off. Um, so let's look at a couple yeah. other questions here. So I, got a, I saw a question here. You know, how do we, you know, since we're all out of the water right now, what are some of the ways for us to, you know, exercise? You know, for me, I have these little, uh, this cord that has a paddle on it, right? And it has a cord, so it's like a little basset trainer, but, you know, you can just hook it onto like a door handle. But the most important thing is about being creative. You know, that being creative, making sure you visualize, you know, like, oh, what? You just have to think out of the box and be like, oh, what will work? You know, if I get this band, if I like lay on the floor, tie a knot on the end of the band and hold it underneath the door, close the door so the band doesn't come out. And then all I focus on is my backstroke pull. That's what I actually do right now. So I tie, get a fair, like just a normal flat band, tie a knot, close the door, and I hold the band so I can get that resistance and just focus on this movement here just trying to engage there you have to be really creative and think outside the box at this moment but you know this is a great opportunity for all of us to think um to use our minds and be creative and like be you know just mentally strong at this point so just be creative and have fun with it you know if it doesn't work it doesn't work but you never know cool let's uh an let's answer one more question you um tyler you go ahead and actually here here's one um what are your fastest times in the 100 yard and 50 yard freestyle Ooh, which i think tyler might have a beat on this it's been so long um i think 100 maybe 42 three something it was that was kind of a while and then uh the 50 19 oh i've never been able to break it oh really i was i was 19 yeah. 1903 my senior year and then I was a forty-one six hundred three. Ooh, yeah. So that was it. Yeah. Blake Pernoni took my Big Ten record away from me. So I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, records are made to be broken, right? Exactly. So, all right. A couple of things. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here, folks. A um, couple of things. One, uh, you guys are gonna get an email. And that email is going to contain a link to watch the replay of this video. I highly suggest you go and watch the replay. It's ending right now, Parker. Don't worry. We're not going to bore you any longer. Uh, you're going to get a link to the replay in your email. Um, also, in, if you want to go back and look at any of our past webinars, you can find all those replays at fitterandfaster.com slash replays. Also, if you want to watch um, upcoming webinars, you can see all of the upcoming webinars at fitterandfaster.com slash live. So go ahead and check those out. I'm also going to put up an offer on your screen right now for our, uh, our Swim Videos app. So right now is a great time to be breaking down all the different things that you're doing and thinking about different drills in our app is a great place for you to go and look uh, to find all sorts of good technique videos and drills with explanations from some of our top clinicians. So now that everybody's waited so long for this part, um, we're actually gonna give away three gift cards right now, three gift cards, okay? Here's how you enter for the gift cards, all right? For anybody who's ever been to one of our clinics before, what I want you to do is I want you to go onto our Instagram, which is Fitter and Faster Tour. I want you to find this post and I want you to write hashtag FFT live on a comment and that's how you'll enter, okay? For anybody who has never been to a Fitter and Faster clinic before, I want you to write, I've never been to an FFT clinic before and also write hashtag FFT live on the same post, okay? Does everybody understand that? So we're gonna give away three gift cards if you win, you're gonna get an email from me with the uh, details for that gift card, but you have to go to this post and either write hashtag FFT live if you've been to a clinic before or tell us that you've never been to a clinic before and um, 
and write hashtag FFT live on your post as well. That being said, um, thank you everybody for the amount of time that you've given us. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Shane, for lending us some of your time and, and obviously your expertise. You guys were awesome. We'd love to have you back. Um, do you guys have any parting messages before we close out the webinar? Tyler? Um, yeah, just, just um, you know, I, I probably sound like a broken record. Just be mindful with your training. Um, just just uh, uh, pay attention to what you're doing. Um, there is no magic pill. And this is something that we do every single day. Um, just keep on at it, you know, just understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and never stop ask or never stop um, asking questions. Yeah, I just hope everyone can stay safe and like, you know, trash this time right now to be with your loved ones and your family and friends or no, not friends, but your family, um, you know, and just stay safe, you know, stay safe. This will all end, you know, this does have an end date and just stay safe, stay mindful and just, you know, do what makes you better every single day. Just try to do something every single day that's new and challenge yourself and just be safe and healthy. Yeah. And uh, just to echo all that stuff, wash your dang hands, stay safe and um, stay positive. Y'all this is again, the people that we see on the 2024 Olympic team are going to be the people who make the best of this time. It starts right now. There are a lot of people out there that are sitting at home feeling sad for themselves if you take yourself to a different place, you stay positive, you visualize, you use all those resources that are out there to keep yourself in tip top shape, both mentally 